Hi, welcome to the Weekly Dose Live. Uh, my name is Jamie and I'm excited again to be here and be um, available to y'all. Um, this week was a very important week and we discussed how to prepare differently, right? We want to make sure that we're putting in all this work and our time and our energy and staying up late and pitching in the cold and but we want it to matter and we want it to be great and different because I want to be better than the pitcher across country that I'm competing against right so hold on one second make sure we're are we good Okay. Okay. So, um, the workout of the week was a very simple one, but it was such a good one. And I hope that you guys, um, had a chance to try it out. Um, no matter what level you are, there's a, always a beginner and an advanced kind of examples to give you an idea. And then obviously you make it fit to you. There's pitchers at different levels, different pitches. And so, um, we kind of just kind of put it into two groups, but the, the workout was to throw perfect pitches. And I think pitchers like to think about, well, that was good enough, right? Like it did one of the two things, like the location was good or, um, gosh, that really broke. Well, yeah, but it was really outside. And so it's good enough in their mind. And we want to try to create workouts that challenge us so we can be strong during the game, mentally strong, mentally tough. And when we go to battle with another batter or another team and the game's on the line, we are strong enough to fight and to not give up and to not be weak when it matters, when it's hard. And that's not easy to do. We have to practice it. And look at the look at the girls. They go to school. I mean, let's just talk about a high schooler. They go to school, they're lifting weights, they have school practice, they go to their um, travel ball practice, then they have hitting lessons and then pitching lessons. They're freaking pooped. They're tired. Right? It's hard to me to be mentally tough. It's not, it's not always easy, but we have to make sure that we continue to strive to just be tough even when it's hard. And parents, this is where you come in because we're learning, we're little girls, right? They're young and you can make the difference. You can give in and I do it with my daughters, right? I do it sometimes to be like, oh, come here, come here. It's okay. Like, I know this is hard. And I word it in a way where I'm like, oh, like it, I know where you're at, but that's okay. Versus having to be like, listen, I know that you're struggling right now. I know you're so exhausted, but like you need to be tough because it's going to help you in the long run. See the difference of just my wording as a parent and they're going to know I still love them. I still care about them, but I got to get my job done. And so I'm going to give you an example in just a minute on how I almost gave in last night to my six year old on the, the, the stupidest thing. And my husband came in and, and he doesn't even know I'm talking about this. Right. And he really like saved the day and challenged her. So I'm going to get to that. But this workout, um, this one is really like, I mean, a lot of pitching coaches do this in college and whatever, but I specifically was talking to Lisa Fernandez while I was recruiting and I was like saying, Hey, like, what are some of the first workouts you do when your pitchers get onto campus and it's like, you're working with them. And she said, we throw 10 fastballs down the middle. And I said, okay. And I said, and she, and she's continued to talk about, right. The reasoning is she wants to see. First of all, we should be able to do it, right? You pitch for UCLA, you should be able to throw 10 fastballs down the middle. But she wants to see which pitchers hold themselves accountable and say that wasn't perfect, right? Ah, oh, it was good. It had a little tail. It kind of dropped just at the end. It wasn't a pure, perfect fastball. And she wants to see the pitchers that are like, ah, oh, that was good enough. 
because when it comes down to a big game, a big inning, like we talked about, which pitcher can she count on? Because which pitcher has trained to be, to strive to be perfect? We're not perfect pitchers. We get that. But who, who is mentally tough enough to be able to pass the test, right? Some days we could do this drill on a Monday and be on. We know that. Some of us, it's like, it's just easy. It's just, oh, gosh, it felt easy today. And some days we could go back out on a Thursday and be like, gosh, I'm struggling. It's taken me 30 pitches to throw 10 fastballs. Like, why? Right? But we're challenging our mind. It's not all about mechanics. It's not all about spin. We know this game is more mental than physical, yet we never challenge our mind consistently. We never prepare consistently to do those things. So I challenge you, if you have not done the drill, challenge your daughters and see. You're probably most, I mean, unless you know they're mentally tough and they've pushed themselves through, I hate to break it to you, but they're probably going to almost like not disappoint you, but you're going to be like, oh, why is she, that wasn't perfect in your mind, right? And you see the pitch and you're like, that totally tailed at the end. And she's like, number three. And you're thinking, who, right? Do I say something? Do I let her just go with it? Right? And that's your question because you know your daughter. Do you wait to the end to say, do you think all those were perfect? Or do you challenge her right there to say, Really? Didn't you see it go to the end? So it's such an important drill, but it's so simple, but it's hard. And I'm going to tell you now what happened to us in our family last night. I went to the dollar store and I purchased one of those like spot the differences. And it's like a little book, right? And I thought this is perfect for my girls. They can kind of look at two different pictures and find the nine differences. Well, my six year old, she usually can find like six out of the nine and then it gets real hard. And I'm cooking dinner and I'm trying to do, and she's like, mom, can you see? And I'm trying to come over and say, oh, look on the bottom of the page, you know, I'm trying to give her some hints. And, you know, I go back to cooking. Before I know it, she turns the page, she starts again. She's doing it all the way until it's easy, until it gets hard. And then she turns the page. So my husband sits down and he's starting to help her and they're looking and all of a sudden, she starts to turn the page and he's like, what are you doing? She's like, well, they're, it's getting really hard. I can't find the other ones, the other three. And he's like, that's all right. Turn it over. We're going to try to find them. It's okay to do hard things. So, you know, was I distracted? Obviously, but it's so easy for us parents to just in the everyday little, little things to say, that's okay. I know it's hard. Turn the page. And I challenge you to catch yourself to catch yourself, to make things a little bit harder for our kids because in the long run, just in life, right? We know life is so hard as a mom, it's so hard, but we have to be able to do the hard things. And I promise you when your daughter is on, on that mound in a championship game or in an extra inning game, and it is tight, and it's a tough one when you see your daughter succeed and walk off that mound with a smile on her face and go over to you and give you the biggest hug, like you are going to be so, so proud of yourself that you taught her how to be mentally tough. It's some kids just have it, but a lot have to be trained in it. So, um, that's this week. I am so passionate about it because I lived it. My parents were so good with that, but I'm like on the other side, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like I just miss an opportunity to like teach my daughters to be, to do hard things. So I challenge you with that. I challenge you. Um, if you have any, any questions or comments, I would love to, to answer them. And the other, I had some questions that I want to answer and one of them was could you please share how you warm up before a game and this is a topic that we're going to share throughout the year and I don't off the top of my head know which month it is so we're going to talk about it right now um, everybody pitches differently and warms up differently right 
we want to a be physically warm but also we want to be mentally prepared and so a lot what i see a lot of pitchers even in college they do the same warm-up they do, that they did probably when they were like 11 years old because it's the comfort right it's the oh, I, this is what I always do. I can't rock the boat. And so they're doing the same drills. Now, when I warmed up before my games, I didn't do any drills. I just warmed up my shoulder probably like three quarters of the distance slowly. And as I got warm, then I started scooting back. And then I just went off, off, off of the mound. Um, some pitchers, depending on your age, this is all different, but I challenge the advanced pitchers. I mean, do you warm up the same just because that's what you've always done? Or does it truly give you um, a way to be prepared for the game, right? So another example would be if you have a, a, a mechanical flaw that you're like, oh, like my curveballs are so good when my glove stays straighter, then I would do a drill to remind your glove to be straighter right? Um, so everything should be specific. Now, if you do like the K drill and you do that to just physically warm up your shoulder, great. If not, why do you do it? Right? If you've been pitching for five years, do you still need to do that before a game? Maybe you do that just in practice. So think about how you can be different in practice and how you warm up and sometimes in a game when it's a game like situation, right? Um, that's, there was a pitcher on the USA team and she would warm up and then she would kind of come in and work on her spins. And when she worked on her spins, then she, to, to warm up that too, right? Not just her shoulders. She's kind of like, I'm just want to focus on spins. And it's really hard for pitchers to go 50% they're like all or nothing. Like I either throw my, my curveball hard or I can't throw my curveball, right? And if, they, if that's the case, then they struggle with just knowing what they're doing with the ball. But she would come up and spin the ball and after she did that, she would go back on the mound and she would throw that pitch. And when she felt that pitch was ready, she would come back up and she would spin the rise ball and then she'd go back and she'd throw a rise. So that's kind of something that you could do but everybody's a little different, and so we have to make sure that we're warming up our pitches and we're physically warm, right? But also reminding us of our mechanical, kind of like muscle memory things that we need to do. The next question was, do you do long toss? Absolutely, not before a game. Uh, but I did long toss so much growing up because it's just something that can, A, strengthen your shoulder, um, B, it focuses on your mechanics and like really kind of giving 100% to make make that distance. Um, but also, as you get older, we do long toss with our curves, with our rise, with our fastballs, making sure our fastballs are not tailing and our curveballs are tailing, but our rise balls are true. Because remember, the rise and the curve are very similar spins. Like how we do it, we just kind of go a little bit here and here. And so... We want to make sure that our rise is pure and it doesn't have a tail. And the more distance you put between you and your catcher, you're going to start seeing if your mechanics and your spin are just a little bit off. So long toss is a yes. Like I think every pitcher would be like, see the benefit of that. Um, before a game though, I wouldn't, especially, you know, there's not a lot of space when you are warming up. Um, if you want to just go a little bit further because so if you pitch from 40 feet and you want to throw from 45 a few pitches just to feel like you have to reach further or do something with your mechanics, then I can see the benefit. Um, another question is, do you focus on spin and then on speed? And I'm assuming this question is maybe just in general, like just along your journey. Um, and that's like a long, that's a long answer for it. Um, but both are important and in different ways, right? If you're mechanically sound and you're trying to go a hundred percent, like you should throw as hard as your body can allow. Um, 
if your spins are sound and you know what you're doing with a ball, like you're gonna get the movement. So for sure, mechanics are the most important thing and our speed should always be there. I think probably 85% of the pitchers out there can probably throw harder if they weren't so comfortable and just feeling like they're going 85%, right? So um, before a game, obviously you're working on everything. So I would assume that's what you're asking is for the whole, the whole shebang of just your journey. So if you struggle with consistency, your mechanics are probably a little bit off. And if you struggle with speed, your mechanics are probably off. So if you're mechanically sound, your speed's on point, and then the spins, you truly have to take care of your spins and learn them daily and don't just be okay with the ball drifting, like truly get good spin to get those breaking pitches. Um, Another question that we had was, do you show your pitches, right? Like your change up, your curve, your rise on the mound when you warm up right before the inning starts? Or do you just throw fastballs because the batters are kind of like timing you, right? They're standing kind of close. The answer is I throw my pitches. Okay, I have to warm up my pitch. I don't even see them. I do see them, but I'm like, it doesn't matter. I have to make sure that from the mound, I feel comfortable, the dirt's good. Um, you know, most often you guys have humongous holes. So it's just a matter of getting comfortable on the mound with your pitches. And I think it's, I think it's good, especially at the younger middle-ish level. Like if you're able to throw a rise ball and it's rising and that batter's like, okay, she's got a rise ball. Dang it. Because I swing at the rise ball, right? It's already in her head. Um, I don't think there's anything that is a disadvantage really. Like they're timing your speed anyways. They should be doing that from the on deck circle in the dugout. So this is your time to truly warm up your pitches. You'll see some pitchers on at the World Series or on TV that they don't throw their change up in between innings. If you are 100% confident that it's going to work for you and you love your change up, then that might be something you can consider, right? If you don't want to show them you have it right away, obviously you throw the first pitch that you do, they're going to be like, oh man, she's got a good change up. So I think it's more of a preference for pitchers to be mentally ready and to do their thing. We always have to remember that there are great batters out there and the great batters I'm going to have to challenge with my strengths. Most have a weakness and if we can figure out that weakness, we might attack it. But if she's a great batter and I'm a great pitcher, I'm going to throw my great pitches because I'm going to bet on myself versus doubting and giving her my number three pitch because that's her weakness. Does that make sense? So we need to make sure that we can go after them and warm up our pitches because game on, she steps in that batter's box. Like we got to do it anyways. And that's where I challenge pitchers out there to make your pitches great. And it doesn't matter. You can say, I'm going to throw you a rise ball, but it's so good that they swing because it's just so tempting. So um, don't let the batters get in your way. Like, don't let them. You, you'll see some pitchers like to do run throughs on the mound in between innings. I don't know why. I think that's just a mental, like, I want to feel like I throw so hard. And I want the batters over there to see like I throw so hard. But when you step on the mound, that's not who you are. So you just wasted three pitches doing run throughs that you're not even going to do in a game. Right? So, um, think about why you do things and what is truly helping you minus forget the batters. Like what helps you? Maybe you do one run through because you're like, Oh, I got to go hundred percent. And then you get on the mound and you do four more pitches. Um, but 
That's a great question, and I look forward to really digging in deeper and giving you more specific examples from other pitchers because every pitcher is different. Every pitcher has a need with their mind of feeling ready, right? Some pitchers want 30 minutes to warm up. Some pitchers just need 20. Some do drills before. Some don't. Like, we're all different, and it's important to quickly find out what really helps us and why we're doing it. Like, if I, my daughters were doing some drills I'm like, we don't do that before a game. Like, you know, like we're here to pitch now, you know, that is to practice and to think about mechanics. And it's like game on now we're in the tournament. So ask, ask your daughters, if you're a parent watching, like ask them, why do you do that? Like, haven't you done that for five years? You still have to do that. <laughs> and they're probably gonna be like, it's just what I do. And I'm superstitious, superstitious. And I just want to do it. Okay. And you're like, cool, do it. <laughs> but is it truly helping them? So, um, well, let me know. Like I always say, um, during the week, if you just go through a tournament and you're like, Oh my gosh, this really was bothering my daughter. Or I've seen other pitchers do this. Like, please like write in. Um, I would love to give you my input and my opinion and see if we can continue just to get our pitchers thinking and parents to help. You guys are such an important part of your daughter's journey. And I want to share what like helped me and what hurt, you know, like some stuff, there's parents out there that do some things that don't help the pitchers. So I want to be able to give you examples from former teammates and all that because you are like a big part of what makes them successful or what burns them out. I mean, let's be real, right? So we all want to be the best for them. And if you have a question, I'm here. I'm a mom. I'm a former pitcher. Like, I'll have an opinion and get you thinking maybe in a different way because we're all in this together is to just help pitchers. And so, um, yeah, but anyways, thank you guys so much. And I hope that you found some value and I hope the lives are valuable to you. You know, if they're not and something else would be a better way to get you some information, then let us know that too. Um, because we want to be, we want to be of service to you. So just let me know and we can kind of adjust things. Or if you love the lives and you can kind of come back and watch them, then that's perfect too. I think the lives are great because, you know, we have busy lives and you can always come back, but then also like your daughters, you might be watching because you're sitting at their pitching lesson right now, or it's Wednesday, right? Most teams practice on Wednesday. And so you're like, Oh, I want her to watch this. So that's where I think that the lives would be great. But if I'm off mark, then let me know. But I look forward to um, starting our new topic next week, and that is communication. We have some good um, YouTube videos for that, so you can subscribe to the Weekly Dose to make sure you don't miss those. But um, communication and life is important, and especially in the position of a pitcher. So uh, we're going to talk about all things like things that I, you probably haven't thought of, or I know one topic that we're going to discuss, like it's a frustration of mine that it doesn't happen. And so I want you guys to tag your coaches for this one. And this is a big part of where the co coaches can grow and coaches can be there for their pitchers. And it's okay. If you have, if you're a coach listening and you haven't done this before, that's okay. Like we're all here to get better and the pitchers have needs and, um, you can help them with that. So I look forward to seeing you guys next week. If you're playing this weekend, stay warm. It's so cold up north. I think tonight is going to be like a low of six, maybe. So um, stay warm out there and um, be great. Prepare differently this week so that you can see the end result on the weekends. All right, guys. See you later.